Microsoft could make Windows 11 work on the majority of PCs that are currently running Windows 10. In fact, I dare say all PCs that are currently running Windows 10, but it's not actually their plan. We're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about an alternative. Somebody comes up if you need to keep running Windows. And of course, since this is switched to Linux, we're going to talk about why you should probably just switch to Linux instead. Let's go ahead and discuss. Thanks for checking out this video by Switch to Linux. If you like this type of content, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Leave us a like and a comment down below. And today we do want to talk a little bit about uh, Windows. Of course, Windows 10 is T minus five weeks, folks. I'm recording this video in uh, September 10th and October 15th is the official end of life of Windows 10. Of course, there are other means that you can continue to run it as a consumer. You can get one more year for $30 or by redeeming like a thousand credits by searching on Bing if you like bad search results or things like that. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's a few other ways that you can do it. You, you can also turn on uh OneDrive and sync your settings and uh, they'll give you one year of support for that as well. So, you know, there's a number of progressing ways. Now, I've seen a lot of theories as to why Microsoft is trying to push Windows 11 and I'm actually starting to kind of be persuaded into the argument that they're really just doing it to push their AI, their AI nonsense and to create effectively a monopoly around AI. And the reason I come to this conclusion is that, yes, it's possible to run Windows 11 on pretty much any PC that can currently run Windows 10. And uh, the fact of the matter is Windows just doesn't want to do it. How do we know this? Well, uh, there is a new release of uh, the Tiny. This is the Tiny 11, which gives you a stripped down version of Windows, which will even work apparently without the TPM 2.0 requirement. Uh, and so we'll get to that in a minute. Now, they also have the Tiny 11 Core, which is mostly for tinkerers. But for people who need Windows and are, I would say you probably should be uh, maybe a computer more advanced. You don't want to try this if you're super novice, probably. But I don't know. I don't do this. This could be simpler than I, than I think. The idea, though, is that you download your Windows uh, file, and this will work on the absolute latest, which is Windows 11 25H2. And you would download the Tiny 11 script. And what this is going to do is strip a lot of stuff out and give you a streamlined version of Windows 11 without all of the AI and all of the bloat. And wouldn't you know it, without all of the AI and without all the bloat, Windows 11 works just fine on every computer they've thrown this at. So uh, uh, NT Dev, he has been away for a while. He's been uh, away for a while, according to his latest post on September 5th, a few days ago. The new release of Tiny 11 Builder is finally here, simplifying the process a bit, while also tackling apps like Copilot and the new Outlook and Teams. <laughs> they're a whackable, he says. Uh, they're also making the image smaller. Of course, Microsoft keeps on trying to push back against it. But one of the things they have in the script is the ability to get into that OOBE screen and once again bypass the requirement for the online accounts. <laughs> Praise the Lord for that one. And then uh, he has a list of applications that he strips out. Some of them he says he, that there's still settings for it are left behind, and so they might bring themselves back eventually. But uh, uh, he does say that uh, for now, as it runs, they are working. He says they are working for X64 and ARM64. It has been tested with Windows 11 24H2, 25H2, as well as the Canary Build 27934 releases. There is also the Tiny Core they mentioned, but that's more for um, developers and things. So it removes this variety of things, just a bunch of stuff that many people may not want on their system anyway. So it removes all of these. So you can have a look over at the GitHub page. You can download the Tiny 11 Builder and you can uh, get this guy to work. And they kind of walk you through the various uh, scripts and what they have. And it's going to effectively spit out a new ISO file that you can use to uh, streamline your system. Again, here's everything that is removed. Look at this OneDrive. Oh man, this maybe I should try and run this and see if I can get a Windows 11 build running on this. I probably should, shouldn't I? Hmm. Maybe we'll try that. Stay tuned for a video on this, possibly. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. 
Uh, so although Edge is removed, there's some remnants in the settings, they say. It, it might uh, show itself up uh, later on. There's a few other things. Uh, they say Outlook and Dev Home might reappear at some point. It's an ongoing battle, so there you have it. And uh, the big question I had that was not addressed in the documentation is the TPM 2.0 requirements. So I went over in discussions and somebody else asked this. Somebody's asking if this will work without the TPM 2.0 thing, which is really I think this is the biggest technical requirement most of the Windows computers are missing. Uh, the developer has not chimed in. However, the uh, this person here says, yes, no requirements at all, just tested it myself. So. There you have it. There's that. Now, of course, uh, in this, um, obviously we can see from this that clearly Windows can still run. They just won't want it to. They want to cram all of this bloatware, all these applications, all of these things on you. Uh, but this new method of doing this can bypass the TPM 2.0 requirements and other system requirements, which honestly gives credit to the speculation that they're all they're trying to do is expire windows 10 to get windows 11 to further push online integration force authentication and ai tools on the people to potentially as some have speculated gain a monopoly over the ai market because of course if all this ai stuff is baked into your computer many people are going to be inclined to use that. I mean, just look at the Google antitrust case, right? You're created an illegal search monopoly. Uh, no, people can change their search engine. It's just most people use the defaults. And that's really the question that we are getting at here. And so right now, this is an alternative for people who need to keep using Windows for something. So I'm looking at this going, oh, Okay, that's interesting. If one needs Windows for something, this Tiny 11 might be one of, and there's a few different scripts like this. We're just highlighting this one because a new release came out, made the news, recently tested. There are a few other scripts like this, which will do similar things. Meaning that if one still has to run Windows for things that you're doing, you still have those options. But I'm going to present the argument now that I think most people, as I've said in the past, should just switch to Linux. Number one reason that uh, we should just switch to Linux is why is it we need to use these third-party scripts to make Windows a feasible operating system? It was the same thing for many years. Like, oh, you can restore the Windows menu with this extension in the plugin. Why should I have to install a third-party plugin to get a core feature of my operating system working when I can just use Linux and just use a desktop environment that already matches exactly what I want to do? That's a, a really good valid point. Number two, I think Linux is just going to be easier for most people. Why do I say this? Well, I say this because Windows is becoming so automated. It's trying to pop up so many things. It gives you so many notifications, application suggestions, so many tweaks. It wants to offer to help you so much. Many people just say, leave me alone. Let me do what I want to do. When you're using a Linux system, it simply sits there waiting for you to give it an input. It doesn't want to get in your way. It doesn't want to spam you about using OneDrive or the Microsoft Game Pass or the new weather app. It doesn't want to push an advertisement inside of your file manager when you open files to look for a file. Looking for a file. Hey, have you tried to enlarge your... Mm -hmm. Instead? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Okay. So um, these are some of those questions we have. Number three point here is that the average person does not do anything anymore that requires certain applications to run. There's obviously, as I said, a few exceptions. Most people right now are using web-based applications. They simply run in web browsers and web browsers work on Linux just as fine. In fact, nearly every web browser, I think actually there's more web browsers you can get on Linux than there are on Windows. You can even install Edge or Chrome on Linux if you're so inclined to do so. I mean, it's there, there, they're available. Uh, you can do that. 
but you should have a look at the software you need. And uh, have you checked alternative2.net to see if there is an alternative to a piece of software you perceive you need? And remember, you don't need that software. You need what that software is designed to do. So find an alternative for it. Obviously, if you're working in some environment that requires you to have some certain application, um, you're not, you know, I'm not going to ask you to quit your job over it or make things difficult, but there are some people that are forced to keep using Windows. Look at that Tiny 11 or some of the other debloat scripts to keep your old computer around if that happens to be the case. However, for the average person, you can get a buy with the free and open source alternatives if the software is not already available for you on Linux. So what software do you need? Have you checked for alternative software? So if you're just basically running a PC for web-based applications, all that works just fine on Linux. In fact, all that works better on Linux. Uh, be, outside of the fact that like in Firefox and some of the other browsers out there, you can create containerization. There's also applications in Linux that will do that containerization for you. In fact, my favorite distribution, Linux Mint, has those um, installed. There's an application called Web Apps that allows you to create uh, basically a web-based application for any particular site that you need, and it keeps all of those sites completely containerized from every other site application, which means if you put your banking on this particular container application, it's invisible to everything else in your computer so that whatever's going on in that does not report itself back to Facebook where they could potentially see your accounts or your banks you're working with. But at the same time, you also have the freedom and the flexibility to say, eh, I'm just going to use a completely different computer because I easily can and do my banking over there instead. And I have a whole video about that. Now, the other factor is uh, if you're just a, a basic computer novice and you just want a system that works, Linux is going to be a lot easier for you. Windows is becoming this high barrier. It's becoming a thing that's in our way. You turn it on and uh, it just pushes an update to you and you planned on this half hour to get something done, look up the movie or whatever you were looking for to do. Instead, you're waiting for an hour for your computer to push an update that you didn't really want to push right now. Linux won't ever do that to you. You turn the thing on, you get your things done, you turn the thing off. Some Linux distributions have the ability to do those automatic updates. Many of them, that is an option, but you have to enable it. So there is always that feature. The ad additional, though, Linux is easy on its surface, but it's also broad. So if you want to learn to increase your knowledge in computing, Linux will help you with that as well. For those in the former group that would just like to get something done on their simple computer and they don't really care, install something like Linux Mint. You don't have to work with it. You, you just you get it installed and it works out of the box. Easy. It does what you want it to do. But if you're on the other spectrum and you're like, I really want to learn a lot more about computers, start with Linux Mint and then learn about the broad spectrum of other Linux distributions and other things that you can do. So what do I recommend? I recommend people try Linux Mint. Now, a brand new version was just released. This is Zara 22.2 was just released in the last week. And uh, I've been running this successfully on uh, one of my production laptops here, giving it a, a test. And so far, it's been working great for me. And they have a very nice button here for installation instructions and you can click this QR code with your phone so you can have all these instructions show up on your phone so when it comes down to uh, getting the uh, system installed in your computer you still have the instructions here now I will remind you Linux is different than Windows you're not going to run the same type of applications. It doesn't work exactly the same way. And with installing Linux is going to wipe out your data. So make sure you have good, solid, verified backups before you try and do anything. Additionally, though, you can try Linux on an external device without actually wiping out your computer. So you can try this out while keeping your current Windows uh, installation intact. Additionally, if you are, have you been just waiting for the end of life of Windows to come? End of life of Windows is knocking in your doorstep. It is uh, it is getting in the late hour. So those that have been thinking about making a jump to Linux, you might want to start playing around with it now. Come on over here to their website and uh, you can uh, choose which installation uh, is right for you. I think that most people would best benefit from the Cinnamon desktop environment. It is modern. It is a full featured desktop. It's going to give you a classic Windows type interface. Uh, Mate is uh, a little bit of a faster desktop 
and uh, it is it does have a little bit older appearance to it, but it does work really well. You'd use this for lower spec computers, and uh, it does have a little bit more flexibility in how you can set it all up. XFCE is a super lightweight. Uh, I would use this for very small computers, very old computers. And uh, again, it doesn't have a lot of the modern amenities and the features like online account integrations and things like that. But it does work really well. For the average person, I think Cinnamon would work the best. You can see what this looks like here. Here is our Mate. Here's our XFCE with just the menus. Uh, most people are probably going to be running a 64-bit system. Uh, most 32-bit computers, um, it would be really, really... We're talking a 15, 20 year old computer, uh, to be something in the 32 bit section. So I'll uh, keep that in mind as well. So there is, uh, what my thoughts and recommendations are. Let me know your thoughts about these. And, uh, I might look at spinning up one of these tiny 11s to see, um, would this be viable to test windows 11 with this? I don't know. I, I have no idea. We'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.